Okay, hello. So I got a question via email from a student who is not in my ASU course, um, but was uh, came across my videos, and uh, they are asking about um, relative humidity, um, how that relates to dew point temperature, um, and um, cloud formation. And unfortunately, since I'm not in your course, um, I don't know exactly what what you are, are kind of learning, um, and I'm not I'm not too familiar with cloud formation. Um, as a biologist, I'm more kind of uh, I understand uh, relative humidity and dew point temperature more from a stand from a biological standpoint. What it means for organisms and uh, like transpiration, plants um, and evaporation. Um, so I'll um, kind of talk about it in those terms, but hopefully it should still give you a good fundamental understanding of how these concepts are related, so um, that you can take that and kind of apply it to um, cloud formation or whatever uh, topic you're learning about. Okay, so hopefully this will be helpful, um, and I'm not going to make this, at this time I won't make this public, um, just so it doesn't confuse my ASU students since we're not going into this much depth, um, but feel free to share uh, the link to this video um, with any anyone you think uh, that it might, that might it might be helpful for. Okay, so um, so here's just a, a graph that I um, pulled from when I taught fundamentals of ecology, or when I TA for fundamentals of ecology, and we went over uh, dew point temperature and relative humidity. So just to go over this graph, this is showing this graph is showing the relationship between vapor pressure. So this is kind of the absolute value or uh, content of um, water vapor uh, in a parcel of air, right? So it's like vape, it's kind of like vapor pressure. Uh, vapor, water vapor concentration, you can kind of think about it, it's in kilopascals, okay, so it's basically more of an absolute um, concentration of water vapor within a parcel of air, okay, and and so these are the straight lines going across this graph, okay, the uh, straight up and down lines going uh, on, across this graph is uh, temperature in degrees uh, Celsius, okay, so this is temperature, x-axis is temperature, y-axis is vapor pressure, and then these curved lines here, this is the relative humidity, okay? So the first important um, curve to point out is this one, uh, one or 100% relative humidity, and this curve right here is basically saturation, okay? Okay, so at at this line, at this point in at this line, um, the air can no longer have hold um, uh, water vapor, right? It, this is at at what point it's saturated. Okay, so when, if you once you hit saturation, if you go this way, if you go above saturation, that's when you start having condensation, right? So if you go here, equals condensation. Okay, so beneath this line, uh, you can have water vapor. Um, past this line, that's when you start getting condensation. Okay, so relative humidity uh, are just these curves, right? So this is 100% relative humidity. Uh, this is 90%, right? That's 80%, 70%, 60%, and 50%. So again, at these at these curves, 50% is just halfway between saturation and zero, right? Okay, and you notice, okay, so why do these curve, right? So again, one thing that's really important to remember is that temperature is going to affect the possible saturation of your air, right? The possible saturation of the water vapor of your air parcel, right? So if, say, at a, uh, so for example, 50, at 15 degrees Celsius, your your saturation, your your air is saturated at, and then you, if you want to see actually the absolute value, your air becomes saturated at about right 1.75 kilopascals, right? Compared to say if you're 30 degrees Celsius, right? Your 100 your, your air becomes saturated with water vapor at 4.25 um, kilopascals of, of vapor pressure, right? So you can hold a lot more. And again, hold is not as is not a technical term, and uh, it can lead to some misconceptions. But that's just kind of a way that I can think about it. So, at higher temperatures, it, you can your your water your the concentration of water vapor can be much higher before condensation occurs. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so our next question is, how does relative humidity um, relate to dew point temperature? So remember, dew point temperature is related, um, it's basically related to the saturation curve, right? Okay, so if you're given a parcel of air, the dew point temperature is if you decrease the temperature, right? If you, you take this parcel of air at a given um, either relative humidity or vapor pressure, right, concentration of water vapor, water vapor, um, if you just take it and then cool it, at what point does it condense, right? At what point does it hit that saturation curve and then begin to condense? Okay, so let's say, let's say we're given, um, we're at 30 degrees. Let's just say we're at 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're looking at the weather channel. It's 30 degrees Celsius, and let's say it's um, let's say it's 50 degrees or 50 percent uh, relative humidity. Okay. Okay. So our question is, okay, at what's the dew point temperature? Okay. So again, we we're at 30 degrees, right? So this line right here, and then we were at 50 percent relative humidity. So we just follow this curve till we hit 30. Okay. Okay, so this gives us basically this those that those two pieces of information give us our vapor pressure, right? It gives us our concentration, okay? Which is about maybe two point two point ten or something. Okay? So again, assuming that our vapor pressure is not changing, okay, assuming that this is um that our that this, those two pieces of information is all we need, um, and our vapor pressure isn't changing, then all we have to do to figure out our dew point temperature is move straight to the left, okay? So move all, just keep moving until we hit our saturation curve. Okay, so we hit our saturation curve right around here, and then that is our dew point temperature, right? So if we just take this parcel of air and cool it, and we don't change anything about the vapor pressure, if we just cool it, at what point does it hit that saturation curve, right? At what point does it hit that saturation curve and then start to condense? And that would be about 18.5, okay, right here. So uh, dew point temperature equals 18.5 uh, degrees Celsius, about, right, using this graph. Okay, so that's kind of the relationship between, right, the, the relative humidity, um, you know, either whether you're given the relative humidity, you can find out your vapor pressure, um, and then your dew point temperature is just uh, the temperature at which you hit that 100% uh, relative humidity or that saturation curve, right? Okay, if you cool a parcel of air. Okay, so that's dew point temperature. And then the last thing I'll, I'll kind of touch on is, okay, so um, those are both kind of important, um, just understanding about, like, you know, how water is, um, condenses, right? Um, but what, as ecologists, we're really interested in, in biological systems, we're also really interested in, um, we're also really interested in evaporation, right? So, and um, one, one thing that's really important that, um, at least in my classes, I've, you know, learning about plants, learning about evaporation, learning about animals, and also people, is this uh, vapor pressure deficit. Vapor pressure deficit, okay? Or VPD, okay? And the VPD is just equal, um, it's basically the difference between um, your vapor pressure um, at saturation, right, at 100% relative humidity, minus your vapor, your actual vapor pressure. Okay? Okay, so let's pretend, because um, this, and, and what this difference is, is it's really going to impact your evaporative demand. Right, so the greater the vapor pressure deficit, the greater evaporation uh, rates uh, that you'll have, right? So if you have a high uh, vapor, pressure, vapor pressure deficit, it's really going to drive evaporation, right? Because it's, it's going to create a bigger gradient, basically, um, between saturation and um, the air, right? Okay, so for example, let's say uh, we are given... Let's say we're given two situations. Let's say I look at the news or look at the weather channel, um, and in Arizona, where I am, it's, um, let's say it's 35 uh, degrees C. Right here's Arizona. It's 
35 degrees C, and let's say it's um, uh, let's say it's 60 percent relative humidity, um, and then let's say in uh, Florida, let's say I'm going to go take a vacation for Florida, and, and you know, so if, let's say Florida, it's you know, let's say it's 30 degrees C, but that it's 90% uh, relative humidity, right? Which one has the greater uh, vapor pressure deficit? Okay, so if we look at where we are, Arizona, in case of 35 degrees, the saturation is here, which is about uh, 6 point, maybe 6.6, 6, right? Um, that saturation and let's say we're at 60%, so it's this curve, and just follow it down until it hits that 30%. So that's about uh, 3.4. Right, so the vapor pressure deficit is this difference, right? So in Arizona, the vapor pressure deficit is um, would be 3.2 kilopascals, right? Okay, let's talk about Florida. Florida is 30%, right? So here's the saturation um, curve at 30%, right? And that is about 4.25, okay? And they are at 90%, so this is a curve for 90%, okay? And wherever it hits 30 degrees, okay? And that is about mm, 3.75, oops, 7.5. So you can see that the vapor pressure deficit in Florida is much less, right? That's about that's 0 0.5, 0 0.5 kilopascals is much less than this 3.2 kilopascals in Arizona, right? So in Arizona, you're going to have higher in this situation. You're have you're having higher, you have a um, greater vapor pressure deficit, right? A greater difference, and which means you're going to have a higher evaporative demand. Okay, so evaporation is going at a higher rate, a faster rate than it is in Florida because there's just not as much of a gradient between saturation and your actual air pressure, right? So the greater the the larger the gradient, the faster evaporation is going to occur, right? So oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> okay. So. What does this mean biologically? Okay, well, it means, you know, it has, it has some more importance for evapor evaporation, right? Um, it has implications for transpiration, right? If you're thinking about plants um, and plants being either water stressed or, um, you know, whether they are, how much they're transpiring, right? If, they're, if you have a plant in Arizona, it's going to transpire more. Let's say it can't close its domains. It's going to transpire more than a plant in Florida, right? Um, you can also think about evaporative cooling, right? So remember, evaporative cooling is really important. Um, you know, sweating, especially for animals, right? Humans do it too, right? Um, when you sweat, uh, you're basically... Uh, want your, it's a mechanism to cool your body, right? You produce water on the outside of your body, um, and then as it evaporates, it actually uh, absorbs heat, right? So then it cools, okay? Uh, so that, so when there's a higher vapor pressure, vapor pressure deficit, right, when there's greater evaporative demand, your that sweat is evaporating quicker, and so you're cooling yourself more rapidly than when you have a smaller vapor pressure deficit. That's why if you've ever been to somewhere where, you know, some I, I, people in Arizona, it's like, oh, it's really hot here, but at least it's, a, you hear the, you hear them say, at least it's a dry heat, right? Because the dry heat, at least you can cool yourself through evaporative cooling, right? If you go to a place where it's really humid, even if it's, you know, only 80 degrees out or 80 degrees Fahrenheit out and as if it, but it's really humid you feel it feels much hotter and that's what you hear sometimes on the uh, weather when they're talking about the weather they say oh it's 80 degrees but it feels like 90 and that's really because that, that has something to do with the evaporative demand right it feels that way because you're unable to cool yourself uh, you're unable to cool yourself through um, uh, evaporative demand, okay? So hopefully um, that might be um, either more or less than uh, you're learning about in your class, but hopefully that is at least helpful for you to kind of understand how these are all sort of related, okay? So uh, let me know if you have questions, and um, yeah, hope that was helpful.